I just love surprises. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Katie and today I am unboxing some happy mail. I was sent through the post a gorgeous box containing some gorgeous items from one of my subscribers and friends, Emma. Thank you, Emma. I have had so much fun with this box and I am doing a whole video on it. The first things I've shown are some gorgeous handmade resin mermaid tails and shells and I am in love. There are two tubes of Daniel Smith Extra Fine watercolours and the first one is Amazonite Genuine and Manganese Blue Hue. I do love me a bit of Daniel Smith. And the third item is a beautifully thoughtful well put together palette of the Holbein Japan colours or Holbein, I don't know how I'm saying that right. Before I go into the video a little bit more, I had done a painting originally and that's going to be on the screen any second now and I deleted it. I deleted all the footage and that was going to be the video I was using and this is a painting I am sending back to Emma that I've done with the supplies and that will still go ahead. However, I still wanted to share as much of the unboxing as I could and using the materials, so I'm doing another dragon. But yes, I'll talk about the palette. It's so thoughtful that she's put all this together for me and she's mentioned quite a few times that she's wanted me to try these Holbein paints. I'm gonna call them Holbein. The colors she has sent me are, and again, pronunciation is going to be an interesting one on some of these. The first colour is Juan Brill, Permanent Yellow, Orange, Vermilion, Scarlet Lake, Opera, that is such a gorgeous pink by the way, Quinacridone Red, Rose Madu, Rose Violet, Lilac, Permanent Violet, Compose Green, Leaf Green, Permanent Green, Verdita Blue, Prussian blue, burnt sienna, and I, there are two metallics, we have a silver and a gold. The first thing I thought when I opened that palette was sunshine. I love the bold, vibrant colours that she has chose to put in here. So I wanted to, well I originally did quite a nice bold and vibrant and lovely painting. I wanted to do that again with this one. I thought I would give the green paints a little of, bit of an opportunity to be used and shine through on this. I don't actually use green paint very often, so I think this has given me a bit of a kickstart into learning how to use it a little bit more. The little dragon on screen is semi-based on a dream I had recently. It's a very weird dream because most dreams are usually weird. I dreamt that a couple of close friends of mine had a fire salamander and I know this isn't a salamander and they were heading away for the weekend and they asked me to look after it they said the skin was just about to shed as reptiles do don't worry about it you don't need to do anything just let it out have a wander and then it'll go back into its tank so okay I'm fine with that well it shed its skin and the wings came off bizarre right definitely knew I was dreaming at this point and it's weird because I actually messaged this friend to tell them about this dream and they actually do have a pet snake who literally a couple of days before I got in touch with them had shed their skin I mean luckily it wasn't a fire salamander where the wings came off but yeah it was weird very weird and anyway I've totally gone off on a tangent and a waffle there let's talk about these paints so I thought I would do this properly and I'd done it properly as well on the other one I hasten to add I'll keep mentioning that because I am very salty about deleting that video there was a lot of hours of footage gone but yes back to the painting so in the background I did some very light layers of the leaf green and just built up a nice soft background with a few hints of background leaves we'll say i've said background a lot there but that's what i did and i kind of like that the yellow color of the leaf green really gives a nice warmth to it as well and it just felt right to do that i didn't want it to be too 
tight I suppose is the word but I didn't want it to be too loose at the same time so just a very gentle and subtle background just two layers for the dragon I took a slightly different approach and I did do a wet and wet technique but I mixed colours whilst it was all still wet and did that throughout the layers on here as well just to build up a richness of colour there. I went in quite gently with these paints, that's the term I want to use here, because they were so vibrant I, I didn't want to overshoot how much colour I was using and be in a bit of a pickle later on so gently building them layers up was the right approach here. Now I've never used the Holbein Japan watercolours before, I have seen them, I have eyed them up but they seemed like I can't just buy one tube, I need to buy a few to get a real feel of it. And I kind of also thought they were pretty much like any watercolour in a tube and if I was going to buy them it was going to be the intention of replacing a colour that I had used up which you can imagine is going to take quite a while but luckily I've got the opportunity to try them now and I can make a few observations on what I thought they were like to paint with now we all know I like a nice granulating colour and I like something where it splits colours as well and it, it's weird because these paints didn't do that but that's not a bad thing when I use watercolours that don't split or anything I like to use them in flat layers and even when I'm mixing colours on the page on within the wet paint I prefer it to lie flat rather than it to have irregularities and I found these had such a lot of control to them I didn't find that they travelled too much, they did travel a little bit on water but they didn't go out of control and that's great because I didn't want that to happen on this. I did also find though there is a sweet spot to how much water you can dilute these with over larger areas and I found that with the tree but again though I'd mixed this colour up because there wasn't a black included but I don't tend to use black very often so I mixed up as dark a colour as I could which could be a good tree colour and I think on that second layer I don't think I'd quite got the ratios right for mixing it. Again I'm learning it's a new material for me. However when it came to adding the detail on the tree which you'll see shortly, completely different story. Beautiful and flat and overall really added, it just added a nice texture without it becoming a texture on its own if that makes any sense. I loved the consistency for doing the outlines, for the wing details here, the paint just glided on, there wasn't any unnecessary pooling, I could go over it again and it didn't really affect anything. I erased the top corner on that wing just because I'd, I'd painted the veins in wrong, so that's why that happened, that was my error. The brushes I used as well, those um, some new ones that I'd got, I thought I'd try some sable brushes they've got a bit of a snap to them but not too much and they hold a good amount of water and again the pigments and colours remained quite consistent throughout the brush strokes which is good because that didn't mean I had to keep dipping in the paint all the time because all the colour had globbed out on the first stroke and I was forcefully pushing it around the page that didn't need to happen it, it just lovely to work with I almost felt like I was using ink to a certain degree but it still kind of behaved more like a watercolour but I think the vibrancy and the application felt more like an ink which is something I've been into at the moment. For the tree details I used a more concentrated version of the colour I'd mixed up and I'd pretty much used the burnt sienna, a bit of Prussian blue, I think some of the permanent violet went in there and maybe, maybe just a hint of the green as well to sort of reflect the background and those lines and grooves that I've drawn on the branch completely consistent all the way through, love it. For the foreground I used a stronger concentration of the leaf green and then I went in and added some tone with the permanent green. I wanted to add a bit more of a vibrancy in the foreground so it would look more like a foreground which is why I chose those colours and I also use a little bit of the Daniel Smith Amazonite Genuine again just to bring out a little bit more texture and detail in there 
and I love it. I really, really am happy with how this turned out and my experience of using these paints has been such a positive one. I just want to say a massive thank you again to Emma for sending this to me and I absolutely love those resin figures that you've sent me as well. I'll treasure them as well as the letter you sent me as well. I think it's so nice to get that and you didn't have to but you sent it me and it was lovely. And thank you so much. I really enjoyed using these paints and I'm sure I'm going to get more use out of them too. Here are the two dragon paintings. I had to feature the original one again. Oh, it was such a good video as well. But I do hope you've enjoyed this one regardless. If you're new here and you've made it all the way through, why not hit that subscribe button and then you won't miss any more videos. And speaking of which, there should be a few on screen you can click on right now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!